Transporting us to the distant year of 4038, we embark on a journey to a sprawling space station where the boundaries between humanity, extraterrestrial life forms, fantastical monsters, and enigmatic humanoid beings seamlessly blur, forging an extraordinary tapestry of coexistence. During this time, the entire society becomes captivated by ruthless arena battles, eagerly immersing themselves in the thrilling spectacles unfolding before their eyes. We follow Steve Armstrong, a fast food restaurant cook who loses his job after intervening in a confrontation at the diner and teaching the unruly alien customers a lesson. As a consequence of his job termination, he finds himself not only bereft of employment but also stripped of his apartment, compelling him to seek temporary refuge with Shorty, his friend from the fast food joint. Shorty resides in modest conditions within the depths of the catacombs beneath the space station, an area inhabited by sketchy and dubious characters. The next morning, Steve gets into a physical altercation with two thugs, whom he skillfully defeats. Impressed by his impressive combat skills, he is offered a position in the arena battles, which he declines. However, with the loss of his job, there is no longer a reason for Steve to stay on the space station, but he lacks the money for the return journey to Earth, so Shorty comes up with the idea of using the remaining money from Steve to go to the casino and try to win the needed funds. Upon arriving at the casino, Steve meets Jade and is immediately drawn to her. Things go well for Shorty at the card table until the casino is suddenly robbed. Taking advantage of the chaos, Shorty seizes as much money as he can and the two of them flee from the casino. With the stolen money, Shorty purchases a ticket for Steve's return flight to Earth. The flight is scheduled for the next day. As the two of them spend their final evening together in a bar, they are suddenly confronted at gunpoint by a casino employee who brings them to the owner, Rogor, where they both have to answer for Shorty's act of stealing the money from the casino. Rogor is not amused by the theft and demands his money back. Steve offers him his ticket, but tickets cannot be exchanged. Steve is given 12 hours to come up with the missing money, while Shorty is held captive as a hostage. With the need for quick cash, Steve can only think of one option, accepting the arena offer and committing to the fights. For the first time in 50 years, a Terran, Steve, enters an arena battle. His first opponent is a menacing-looking extraterrestrial monster that outweighs Steve by several weight classes. The fight doesn't start well for Steve as he takes a beating. However, the tide turns and Steve begins to hold his ground by striking the monster's sensor nerves. It goes back and forth until Steve delivers a final kick, defeating the monster. Intoxicated by his victory, Steve decides to compete in the entire arena tournament, aiming to bring a Terran back to the top as the champion. Steve is now able to pay off Rogor, and upon learning that Steve is going to compete in the arena tournament, Rogor isn't that amused about that as the current champion, Horn, is under his command and Rogor fears that if Steve were to become the new champion, he could lose his influence on the space station. During sparring, Jade suddenly appears, the woman Steve has been eyeing, distracting him and leading to him taking some hits from his extraterrestrial training partner. He chases after Jade and asks her out on a date, to which she shows great interest. It's the last evening before the big final fight, and Steve chooses to spend it with Jade rather than focus on preparing for the match. Naturally, during their date, they grow closer, and while it would be advisable to conserve his physical energy the night before a big fight, Steve, on the other hand, goes all out physically. Jade offers Steve a drink, and shortly after, we learn that Jade and Rogor are in cahoots, and Jade was supposed to administer something to Steve to sabotage his fight. The next morning, Steve realizes that accepting the drink was not the best decision. It turns out the drink was laced with a paralyzing poison, leaving Steve disoriented and seemingly unfit for the fight. However, Steve is given an antidote that is expected to quickly restore his strength. He now discovers that Jade is affiliated with Rogor, and the two are working together. This greatly infuriates Steve, and he becomes more determined than ever to win the fight and show Rogor what he's made of. The fight begins with a slight delay, and Steve and Horn seem to be evenly matched. It's an intense back-and-forth battle, and neither of them seems to gain the upper hand. Meanwhile, Rogor's henchmen attempt to manipulate the fight behind the scenes by hacking into the main system that has control over the handicapper. The handicapper is visualized by a beam of light that engulfs both fighters and is intended to ensure the fairness of the match. Rogor's henchmen have altered Steve's handicapper to drain his strength, Steve is thus impaired and weakened, allowing Horn to gain the advantage. Shorty catches wind of their evil plan and fearlessly confronts one of Rogor's henchmen, determined to put an end to their treacherous plot. 
Meanwhile, Steve's chances of victory diminish further, and Horn unsurprisingly dominates the fight. Just in the nick of time, Shorty manages to put a stop to the unfair interference and takes out both henchmen. As a result, Steve is able to gather himself again and challenge Horn's seemingly assured victory, turning the tables once more. With a series of targeted blows to the face, Steve ultimately manages to bring Horn to his knees and wins the fight, becoming the champion of the universe. The crowd celebrates Steve ecstatically. Jade distances herself from the disgraced Rogor and tries to regain Steve's favor. Unfortunately for her, it doesn't work out, sweetheart. I hope you enjoyed this recap of the fun sci-fi film Arena from 1989, which doesn't take itself too seriously but offers some light-hearted entertainment, complemented by wonderful practical effects and costumes from special effects icon John Carl Buechler. If you would like to see more high-quality recaps, then don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button and share your suggestions for future recaps in the comments section because I would absolutely love taking on your ideas. See you in the next one.